Good evening. At this time, please silence your cell phones. Be advised that these proceedings are being recorded. If you desire to address the City Council during the meeting, please complete a request to speak form available at the front entrance and present it to the City Clerk. Speakers will be called upon at the appropriate time and each person is allowed three minutes speaking time. I also want to let you know that tonight, before we start our meeting, we will be closing in memory of, of two of our residents. Uh, we close in memory of longtime Grand Terrace resident Sharon Abbott, who was a ver very much an advocate for making sure that things were done as they should be in the city, and she worked behind the scenes a lot, a lot of times, but she was, she was very, very aware of everything that was going on, and she will be missed. We are also closing memory of Coach Harold Strauss. Um, he touched so many lives through his career, and not just uh, the, the students that he coached. And I understand a number of football players went on to be professional football players under his mentorship. But then also the family who's, families that, that he was there for when they needed his assistance. And so he was our first Grand Terrace high school football coach. And he did wonderful things to get that football program started. So we are sadly closing in his memory tonight also. So at this time, I will call to order the regular meeting for the city of Grand Terrace for December 10th, 2019. Our invocation tonight will be offered by Father Velasquez of Immaculate Conception Catholic Church. If you would please stand for the invocation and remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I'll start with the, a passage of uh, the gospel. Jesus said to his disciples from uh, the gospel of Matthew chapter 7, Jesus said to his disciples, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who, who does the will of my Father in heaven. Everyone who listens to these words of mine and acts on them will be like a wise man who built his house on rock. The rain fell, the floods came, and the winds blew and buffeted the house. But it did not collapse. It had been set solely on rock. And everyone who listened to these words of mine, but does not act on them, will be like a fool who filled his house on sand. The rain fell, the floods came, and the winds blew and buffeted the house, and it collapsed and was completely ruined. God our Father, as we gather together, we praise you for this day and your purpose for it. Heavenly Father, in our hearts we plan our course. But we pray that you establish our step, our steps. I pray that we seek you for advice. Let us not make a decision based upon what we know, but let us act based upon your wisdom. Please guide us, Lord. We place this meeting in your hands. We place our hearts and our minds in your hands so that you may direct us. Lift our, our eyes to seek you first today and always surrendering our need to achieve, understand and be known. Shift our perspective to seek you peace above all else. In every situation we ponder in our daily lives, let the Holy Spirit translate your commands Give us renewed strength and godly courage to obey, to obey you without questioning. Forgive us for striving beyond our means, worrying and forcing results. Only you know what lies ahead. You are a good father, just and righteous. Though our circumstances will be unfair from time to time in this life, 
You are always our unwavering protector and shield. Keep the words of King David fresh in our minds and renew our hearts to the tune of your truth. I lie down and sleep. Awake again because the Lord sustains me. Let your peace rain down on us today as we seek you more than anything else. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance to our nation's flag. Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance. Thank you, Father. <clears throat> Madam City Clerk, may we have roll call, please? Council Member Allen? Present. Council Member Hussey? Present. Council Member Robles? Present. Mayor Pro Tem Wilson? I am here. Mayor McNabo? Present. Madam Mayor, you have a quorum. Thank you. So our first item tonight is a special presentation by Fire Chief Fire Warden Muncy. You would come forward, sir, and give us your report. Good evening, Madam Mayor, members of the council, City Manor Duffy, uh, Grand Terrace residents. I'm Dan Muncy. I'm new, your, your new fire chief for the county of San Bernardino. As you know, we're the biggest county in the United States, covering 19,000 square miles. We have about 1,196 employees. A little bit about me, I uh, graduated, from, I did not, I actually went to Riverside Poly High School. I did not graduate, I dropped out, don't do what I did. I never even got a 2.0 in high school. I was a rock climber and I was a surfer and I ended up moving to Joshua Tree. And one day I was climbing and my friend fell and broke his back. And that instant changed my life. I decided I better become an EMT and in order to do that, I needed to get my GED. Not proud of that, but I did. And I started going to college, and I did a, a EMT class, and as part of that EMT class, I did a ride out with the local fire department in Yucca Valley. And the moment I stepped foot into that fire station, I knew for the rest of my life that's what I wanted to do. I went ahead and worked, and I got two associate's degrees in business administration and in emergency medical systems. Went to the fire academy and paramedic school and became a paramedic. Now, while I didn't have a 2.0, and I'm talking directly to you guys, in high school, when I had my master's degree, it was at 3.98, but I have my master's in public administration. If I can do this, you can do this. I'm now the fire chief of the largest county in the United States. I take a very proactive approach, um, a little, um, little bit different than most fire chiefs. I truly believe in being Grand Terrace's fire department. Sure, it says the county of San Bernardino on my patch on both sides, but we are integral in the city. We are here to make a better community. We are here to support city staff with anything they need and with the city departments. Examples in the past, working with different cities, if there was a light bulb that needed to be changed in the park, don't get a lift. We have ladders that can reach that high. We're happy to help you. And while it's a small example, we realize that if we can save the city $500, that's $500 that's going back to our residents. But we are going to be very vested in your community. I also believe in hiring from the local community and matching the diversity of, of the communities that we serve. This is really important to me. While we were growing up, we would ride our bicycles, and when you're riding your bicycle, you could always point to the house where the firefighter lived. Now, our, we work 24-hour shifts, and the key is, though, is that when you're a firefighter, it's not just when you're working, it's when you're off duty, too. And it's very important that the kids riding their bicycles can point to the firefighter that lives on their block, and that firefighter is their coach, and he's their little league, and he's involved, involved in the community. The final thing that I think is a little bit different is I'm very, very um, into communicating very well with our residents. I'm on Twitter now, which is not easy for me. I'm not on TikTok. <laughs> but I am on Marco Polo, but um, that's for my daughters, not for you folks. Um, and outreaching to the community. So I've gone in and formed a Twitter account and we're on Facebook in Spanish now, but we're really working on communicating to the community like that. You're also gonna see me at your events. You're gonna see our department at your events a little bit more. Um, 
there's some good things that are coming up in the city. I know that we're going to do a Stop the Bleed program. You're going to see us doing what we call sidewalk CPR, hands-only CPR. And we're going to be looking at the risks that face this community and figuring out how to stop the calls from ever happening. Let me explain. We run 147,000 calls a year, not all in the city, obviously. Um, but I look at that 147,000 911 calls and I look at each one of those as a failure. We failed to prevent that call. The fire service is getting more and more expensive every single day. And it has a lot to do with retirement. It has, has a lot to do with just government in itself is getting expensive. We need to reduce the calls that we go on. We need to prevent those calls from happening. When I first got hired in the fire service, they said, hey, firefighters, you're the only industry out there that's actively working yourself out of a business, referring to fire prevention. And we've done a good job over the years reducing the amount of fires. But we're not doing a good job in other ways, preventing some of the floods or making sure that citizens are prepared for earthquakes. How many of you guys know that the San Andreas Fault's right here? How many of you guys are prepared to be self-sufficient for a week if that San Andreas, without drinking your toilet water? The point is, is that we do a bad job making sure that our citizens are prepared for these emergencies. I've been on this hill that's been on fire numerous times. It happens every single year. What's preventable is predictable. What's predictable is preventable. So I take a very modern approach. Finally, to communicate to the council, I'm very much into technology and creating operational platforms. So you can dwell down and look into our fire department and see with transparency where are the Grand, Grand Terra City dollars going? How is our diversity? Are we meeting our quotas? Are we serving the city like we should? So I'm very proud to be your fire chief. Now finally, I want to finish this off talking about Chief Mejia. Chief Mejia is absolutely one of the most respected fire officers, chief officers in the state of California. He was my hero growing up. I was a rookie firefighter when he was an engineer, and let me tell you, every day I entered a fire station and Dan Mejia was around, I was scared. Because he demanded excellence. He is absolutely going to take care of the city and keep you safe. He also knows that I fully support him. He is your area fire chief, and he has the full authority of my office. So with that, I want to thank you for allowing me to come and introduce myself and talk a little bit about our approach to protect Grand Terrace in the future and the things that we're interested in. Uh, I have asked Dan to, to see if I can be put on the docket sometime early next year to give you a calendar snapshot of our activities in the city and some of the things that we have planned moving forward to make sure that we're integrated in. You can always reach me. I know that the city manager and I have a great relationship and he can provide you with my cell phone, and please do. Any of you guys can call, text me at any time, even FaceTime. You guys FaceTime? Um, and of course, you can always go through Chief Mejia. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Chief. And we'll get you a lapel pin, so even though you have patches that say San Bernardino County, you can have something that shows Grand Terrace. Totally honored that you would do that. Mm -hmm. And I would do it at San Bernardino Road again. Absolutely. Thank you. All right, our next item is an opportunity for reordering or additions or removal of items from the agenda. Mr. City Manager. Yes, Mayor. I would like, if possible, to move item number 15 up to uh, the top of a new business. Okay. And you have an introduction for us as well? Yes. We have with us today our new Planning and Development Director, Mr. Stephen Weiss. And Mr. Weiss will say a few words. He comes to us from our neighbor, city of Colton. Uh, and so Mr. Weiss has an extensive background in planning and he'll share that with us. Good evening, Mayor and Council Members. It's truly an honor to be here. I, I probably shouldn't say much now, Maybe in a year I can say a little bit more, but uh, it's truly an honor to be here. And I love Grand Terrace. I've been here two whole days. <laughs> <laughs> and, we had a, and we had a party for you last night, right? That was so generous of you. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. Thank you very much. Glad that you're here. All right, so we'll move on to our consent calendar. Consent calendar items are expected to be routine and non-controversial. They'll be acted upon by the city council at one time without discussion. Any council member, staff member, or citizen may request removal of an item from the consent calendar for discussion. Are there any requests to remove items? Yes. Council member Robles. I'd like to remove the minutes of November 12th. Okay. 
which is item two. two. Okay, any others? All right, I'll entertain a motion for the balance. So move. And I'll second. Motion by Councilmember Robles. Was that second by Councilmember Allen? Mm -hmm. Okay, please vote. Motion passes unanimously with Council Members Allen, Hussey, and Robles voting yes, Mayor Pro Tem Wilson voting yes, and Mayor McNabo voting yes. Thank you. Minutes from November 12th, Council Member Robles. Yes, in my uh, uh, comments, the third paragraph, Council Member Robles participated in the NIWAP Commercial Real Estate Development Bus Tour. Um, it kind of missed the gist of what I was uh, saying. Uh, the tour did focus on logistics, but they also, but I also mentioned that they uh, build office buildings and they also um, renovate obsolete retail centers. Because the way it sounds, it's I'm like I'm supporting logistical warehouses and I don't want that to, to be what people think. Can we bring that back to the next meeting with the corrections? Okay. Yes, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Any other? Any other corrections on this while we have it open? Okay, no? All right. So that'll come back to us. So we'll move on to public comment. Opportunity for members of the public to comment on items not on the agenda. Because of restrictions contained in California law, City Council may not discuss or act on any item not on the agenda, but may briefly respond to statements made or ask a question for clarification. Items may also have a brief response from staff to questions raised during public comment. And items may be requested to be agendized at a future meeting. Do I have a request to speak at this time? Thank you. Our first speaker is Jeffrey McConnell. Jeffrey McConnell, Grand Terrace. This is regards to my CUP. It was at the Planning Commission uh, the last meeting. Um, I'm basically requesting the council to put on a future agenda for an appeal process because um, I feel that the previous planning director totally misled the planning commission and I went the following morning to the city clerk and requested a whole lot of um, documents to prove my point and she can fill you in on this and I received a letter from them saying it would take much longer time frame, time frame than the um, the appeals process would. So I spoke with the, uh, Steve, the new planning director about it and uh, went up to the city uh, clerk and we spoke to her about it. I'm just going through the process. And, um, and now I'm here standing before you asking that this be put on a uh, future agenda to discuss this issue at length. And the, the evidence I found that the uh, previous planning director, in my opinion, misled the planning commission, which tainted the outcome. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. McConnell. Our next speaker is Bobby Forbes. Oh. Burns Avenue, Grant Terrace. I would just like to say thank you to everyone in the community, the city staff for the great event with the holiday decorating. It was really nice and we scored with the weather. That was wonderful. But mostly the historical and cultural committee stepped up to the plate again last night and they did a great presentation here at City Hall in celebration. And I know that not everyone gets to come to all of these events, but maybe someday the people that don't attend will try and get out that maybe are listening to this meeting tonight and come to something else that the city puts on because it's really heartwarming when you see so many volunteers put out for our community. And I just want to say thank you. Thank you, Ms. Forbes. That's the last item that I have for public comments. So we'll close public comment and bring it back to council for their communications. We'll begin with council member Jeff Allen. Thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> Since the uh, last council meeting, which was last month, you know, I didn't get a chance to attend everything I wanted to attend. I, um, I missed out on that great uh, dinner last night you were talking about, uh, the uh, 
Historical and Cultural Committee always hosts a wonderful uh, city birthday uh, potluck dinner, and I sure wanted to attend, but I didn't want to spread around what I had to anybody that was there, and so I thought it might be safer if I stayed at home. But I want to thank them for hosting that and for our, honoring our city's founding and, and continuing to that, that tradition on. That's a great thing. Um, on uh, Monday, December 2, I had the, got to attend the ribbon cutting of our newest um, smart bus shelter, the Omnitrans bus stop, on Barton Road, which is across the street from Miguel's. And if, it's, a, I guess you could say, a high-speed, high-tech bus stop. And um, I'm proud that Omnitrans chose Grand Terrace as one of the first places, not the first, but one of the first to, to put one of these in. So if you... Uh, use Omnitrans, um, check that bus stop out, and hopefully we'll get some more. I look forward to it. I, uh, I, I actually, I'm a member of the Colton Joint Unified School District Community Cabinet, and I have always tried my best to attend all of their functions. And this past December 4th, past Wednesday, um, I, I wasn't able to attend that one uh, because I was um, still was, um, had that head cold going on, and you know, and didn't want to be in the middle of all those students, but I really missed out on my opportunity to say goodbye to a fine uh, superintendent, um, Mr. Jerry Almendez, who went to work for Santa Ana as their superintendent. And uh, they really got a great um, school leader there. Uh, and, but I'm looking forward to meeting our new superintendent and uh, working with all the great folks who are members of the community cabinet to improve our um, everything we can for our students uh, over at the high school. I um, on the Thursday this past Thursday on the fifth. Fortunately, I was recovered enough that I got a chance to go and watch the uh, tree lighting, the light up Grand Terrace. And I've gone to that almost every year since we've been he living here in Grand Terrace over 20 years. But that I've lived here, but ever since we've been doing the light up Grand Terrace, I, I'm so pleased that the the the, the show continues to grow uh, and with more and more participation. I'd like to thank those vendors who came out and set up their tents and to market their wares or to uh, promote their organization. Um, I, I want to thank the Boy Scouts and the Girl Scouts for all their help that they uh, put on, and all the volunteers. I'd like to give a real huge shout out if you're listening Frankie you're such a treasure for our community and also to the Azure Hills Adventist Church they have always been there for our community we have they have that big parking lot right in the center of town and they're they're so willing to share it with us and we thank you so much for doing that for us um, let's see those those dance groups, I got to mention them because my granddaughter's in part of that. And um, so she was out there with her uh, group from the, the dance studio, which is down the street, down on Barton Road, across from McDonald's. She was with that group. And uh, I particularly liked watching the um, Polynesian dancers. I kept thinking that Senator Leva might pop out there, but she uh, didn't show up. Every time I've gone to one of Senator Leva's events, she has Polynesian dancers. Cause, you know, so, but she wasn't there. <laughs> um, you know, one of the things I wanted, wanted to also mention is um, I had a resident, um, well, maybe I'll ask this later on um, about something else. Okay, that's all, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Allen. Council Member Bill Hussey. Thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> Thank you, everybody, for coming out tonight. You know, I was like also thank the Historical Society. I'm sorry I didn't get to make it last night, but it's always a beautiful event, and I missed out on that good food, so I don't know if you guys saved me any, but thank you, Ann, for everything you do for our city and all the ladies who put it together and the volunteers. I really appreciate it. Um, the tree lighting ceremony, great. It's one of our best events, I think, here in Grand Terrace. We all have good events here in Grand Terrace, but... It's a good thing the family get together and, and bring on the holiday spirit, Christmas, and just all the volunteers that did it, you know, a great job. And, you know, like Bobby said, the weather was great this year. We didn't have to go stay underneath the tent or be inside. So great event. Um, I'd just like to say a couple of things about Miss Abbott and Coach Strauss. I'm going to miss Miss Abbott's weekly phone calls. 
is always a fire to put out. And um, I'm sure I still got a couple of voicemails on my phone, so I'm going to keep them on there. But my prayers are for her family and the comfort of her family. Coach Strauss, I've known Coach Strauss for a long, long time. He coached my son and, and football, and Coach Milo is here too. And he wasn't only a coach, he was a, a brother, Christian brother, family man, mentor, not only to the kids, but to a lot of the staff at Colton Joint Unified School District. Great guy. And if you know him, your name is Bubba. Everybody is Bubba. So our prayers and thoughts are for him and for the family and his, and his extended family. And I'm sure when he closed his eyes here on earth and he opened them and seen God, God probably said, welcome home, Bubba, well and faithful servant. So we're going to miss him. Great man, great man of God. I know, I will to put this out there, but they have a ceremony in honor of his life, celebrate his life. I believe it's December 20th at uh, Sandals from 1 to 3. If you can make a great way to honor a great man. And uh, last but not least, I want to wish everybody a Merry Christmas. I want to wish our men and women deployed on foreign soils who are away from their family and loved ones. I pray that you come home one day and be with your family. I wish you guys a Merry Christmas, all our first responders, and I wish our city staff a Merry Christmas. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Council, Council Member Hussey. Council Member Sylvia Robles. Um, I also first want to begin um, offering my apologies. I did also miss the dinner. Um, my granddaughter is expecting January, and we had the baby shower at my house because I seem to be the only one to have a house that can accommodate everyone. So I had to clean, mop, and dust for the guest, and then I had to clean, mop, and dust after all the dirt of everybody leaving. And then as soon as I cleaned, mopped, and dust, everybody went outside and brought in more dirt, and I had to do it again. So I was just completely worn out. But um, I also want to thank the staff. Um, we have a wonderful new tradition in Grand Terrace of our holiday uh, event, and all of you um, volunteers and staff have excelled once again also want to thank the city manager for listening to um, the ideas of a, a bus shelter that's uh, digital. It was kind of funny when I was still serving on Amatrans. Um, the, the chairman didn't even know we had a bus shelter like that right in front of Amatrans. And he was quite impressed when I said, let's go out here, and, and there's one right here. So it, it's uh, very nice to see that. Um, And um, let me um, share that I was invited by the uh, Inland Empire Economic Council to a Latino Summit. And it was a very last minute, but I made sure I went. And it was quite interesting. I want to share some, some things very quickly. Um, it was interesting to listen to a Jennifer Hernandez, an environmental la a lawyer from Berkeley. And she said she thought she was a lefty, and she thinks she's going to be thrown out of the lefty party because um, her feelings, and she was quite passionate, um, that in Sacramento, their um, Latinos uh, caucus out uh, way in numbers and power, uh, for example, the Republican uh, folks, and yet we have some of the worst housing uh, policies and remedies uh, coming out of Sacramento right now. And this is coming someone who is about my age, and that's like in the late 60s. And she's um, very dismayed with, with um, the policies coming out. Um, for example, um, there are some graphs, and I'm just going to go real quickly. But it says every mile you come from the coast this way, I mean, the other way, uh, from, from San Bernardino County going towards the coast, housing costs increase 19000 per mile. Um, the 77 mile commute is the distance uh, to the coast. The medium for a two bedroom apartment increases $33 per month per mile. So in Santa Monica, to buy a house, you're looking at 1.7 million. Apartment rent is 4,000. Latinos and African American population, 20%. Los Angeles home purchase, just under 700,000. Apartment rents, just under um, 4,400. 
Latino American and African American population, 57. So you get to San Bernardino, you can buy a home for 288,000, apartment rents to just under 1,500, and you have a population of 76% Latino and African American. And 56% that is Latino. So the reason they were focusing on Latinos was not to be discriminatory, but to say you have a high population here and you kind of need to focus on that population and try to change some of the economic and educational trends. Um, they also brought up CEQA. The funny, so CEQA was brought up, to, you know, um, I think it was during uh, Pete Wilson. Um, but now what has happened, this was supposed to be just kind of giving a, a, a better look at projects. Now what happens is that you have anonymous lawsuits. They're very cheap to file. There's no cl uh, clear rules. And the judges like deciding cases. So the, the, the issue is the most common judicial remedy is a reversal project approval. So, we ha so the, the issue is that most lenders and grantors have to wait three years or more for a lawsuit to be decided. So we are, we're, we're not getting housing production like we should be in California. So bottom line, she says filing lawsuits ends a project. The other thing that you might be, you know, when there's a stadium to be built, and they're gonna use taxpayer money and whatever, all of a sudden you don't need CEQA, it's, it's gone. So this is the last thing I'm gonna go through very quickly, it was an eye opener for me. Um, so this was in the Bay Area, so single family dwelling unit was the lowest cost uh, product to make in housing. Um, the lowest cost is when you use wood, no union labor, no elevators, no um, a, uh, accessible di uh, disability requirements. In the Central Valley, you can buy a home for 300,000. Um, then there's the uh, single family small lot. It's feasible in most markets. Um, the townhouse is feasible in most markets. Um, townhouse condo is feasible, is feasible only in the most expensive markets. In the Bay Area, a townhouse has to sell for 600,000 or it, it's simply not worth building. A mid-rise is, is feasible only in expensive markets. And um, the most expensive is a high-rise. And it's feasible only in the most ex ex extremely expensive markets. So that was interesting to me because we're talking about um, a lot of um, high-rise from Sacramento and so the disconnect according to, uh, to this attorney was, why are you pushing the most expensive model of a home, home to build? And that would not work in all markets. So that's enough of that. Um, I also was invited to a luncheon for the Mobile Home Manufacturers Association. Um, it was very interesting because we do have some mobile homes and the reason they, they wanted to um, meet us is because they want us to know that before there's any issues in a mobile home, they want a relationship with the city, they want us to call them, and they even want us to call them when there aren't any issues. Um, and they would like to come and do things um, to benefit the mobile home owners in all the cities. The other thing that they did um, is they had an, a raffle and an elected official could win $1,000 for their nonprofit in their community, two 500, a 750, a 150, and I didn't win anything to bring home to this community, but I'll go back and try again next, next year. And um, I also intended the installation for the apartment association owners of the greater Los Angeles area, and everyone that came to me had some kind of relationship in Grand Terrace. The uh, president um, said, my dad's best friend lives in Grand Terrace. And I said, oh, who is that? And he said, oh, Bar Barney Carger, um, who was a, a retired developer in this city. Um, the, another people came and said, oh, I knew Frank Dominguez who owned Banner Development. And Doreen Dominguez said she grew up in this town, Grand Terrace. And I didn't know where that was at first. And then Eloise Reyes has invited a, a number of people to, to her home. So we're a very small community, but we're very well known in, uh, in, in a, a number of circles. And just let me look at my calendar real quick.
and I covered it all. Thank you. And Merry Christmas to everyone. Thank you, Councilmember Robles. Mayor Pro Tem, Doug Wilson. Thank you, Mayor. I'll uh, just take a couple of minutes. Uh, first, uh, I really appreciate the ribbon cutting ceremony for the uh, bus stop. Um, it was a little bit comical from a developer standpoint. He had $10,000 worth of people jammed into a bus to go down about a quarter of a mile and, and cut four or five ribbons. And, and we put a lot of ribbons on there, so everybody got to, to make a cut. Uh, but it's an indication of um, cooperation between the agencies. And that's what we need. We need that cooperation. So small or large, we'll take anything we can get. Um, also, really appreciate everybody here uh, being here tonight and uh, did, I, try, I did a trial run on the, uh, the dinner that we had last night. Uh, it, wasn't really, it wasn't really on purpose. Uh, the city of Grand Terrace was the benefiter of the situation. As it turned out, I, I thought we were going to have the dinner a week before that, and so I, I made 120 deviled eggs <laughs> myself. <laughs> Spent about five hours doing it. And then at the end of it, when I found out for sure that we were going to have the dinner like last night, then I hustled over here in the rain and dropped them off to the, to the city. And I trust that nobody got sick or anything, so I'm not going to say it was turned out all right. So then I uh, cooked another 72 of them last night or yesterday and then, uh, and then brought those in for the dinner. And dinner was great. Uh, we had a lot of food left over. Um, I'm sad to report that there might be a few people missing there, and I think it's just a constant of time. Because unfortunately, over a period of time, some of the faces that I remember have either disappeared, or they've moved, or they've gone on beyond the, beyond the veil. So uh, one, of the, one of those three things, but we all had a good time, and the Girl Scouts gave us a really neat presentation, and I got an opportunity to be introduced to, the, to each one of the Girl Scouts, and they were very excited, and, and they've got a great program. So I appreciate the parents and the volunteers. Well, this city is a volunteer city, there's no doubt about it, and it really does help. And last but not least, of course, our rainless uh, Christmas tree lighting. Hooray! You know, we were doing a minute-by-minute -minute forecast with the city manager. He was over there checking the airport and anything he could find in relation to uh, weather forecasts. And Fortunately, uh, we were able to elude the rain that happened the next day by, what, maybe 10 hours, somewhere in that direction, and we got positioned in there and took care of business. And the only regret I had was is I was supposed to be able to, I was promised to be able to do the countdown, but there was a miscommunication, and unfortunately, I was not able to do the countdown. Uh, but I promise next time, if I am so elected, I will fulfill my abilities. That's all I have, Mayor. Thank you. Oh, and Merry Christmas to everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. So I'll start with the ribbon cutting for the smart bus stop, and I thought that was a really nice way to unveil our new digital bus stop. And I will say to you, Council Member Robles, uh, Mayor Frank Navarro is wondering how we got the bus stop. <laughs> And I, I know, and I, and I apologize to him for taking his planning director. So he will probably be calling you to ask what process you went through to get that bus stop, since I gave you credit for doing it. I said, ask Sylvia, she knows what we did. So on, on Omnitrans, December 4th, when I apologized to Frank Navarro, um, we also received an agency management report for fiscal year 2020, our first quarter report um, from the management plan plan of strategic initiatives and key performance indicators for FY20. First quarter reports, Redlands Passenger Rail Project. The um, Omnitrans had entered into a contract with SBCTA to be the operator of the Redlands Passenger Rail or the aero operator for the Omnitrans. And that is going to be changed perhaps to the Southern California Regional Rail Authority. So we were given that update at the Omnitrans meeting. And then we also had a report on the zero emission bus regulation rollout plan. That is something that is, that is looming on the horizon for all, um, all bus agencies, that they must go electric by a date.
state certain. I think it's after 2024 percentage of their buses that they purchase have to be electric. So we also authorized the interim CEO general manager to issue a call for public hearings associated with our proposed service changes for fiscal year 2021 20, through 25 and connect forward short range transit plan and service plan. Those public hearings will be held on January 13th, 2020 through February 7th, 2020 and it will close on February 13th. And I believe the locations for those are on the Omni Omnitrans website if parties are interested. I also attended uh, San Bernardino County Transportation Authority meeting that day. We conducted hearings to consider resolutions of necessity, which means we are looking at the condemnation for property interests for the Mount Vernon Viaduct project in the city of San Bernardino. We also approved an, a third amendment to a cooperative agreement with the City of Ontario for the Archibald Avenue at State Route 60 project. They're going to be doing some upgrades to, to that area in there. We also waived the five-year maximum contract duration required by policy to approve a, another amendment to a contract with Overland, Pacific, and Cutler to extend expiration date by one year for right-of-way management acquisition services for the Interstate 15, Interstate 215 DeVore Interchange Project. There is no additional cost that we approved on that. We also approved the creation of a new position of Director of Special Projects and Strategic Initiatives and a revised mission statement for the agency. On December 5th, Light Up Grand Terrace, I heard so many comments from so many people that were there about what a wonderful or what a wonderful event it was and that it gets better every year. Thank you so much to the committee that put that together. Thank you to staff for all their hard work. But there were so many booths by our social organizations and our sports leagues and, and others. So that is so wonderful that they came out and made it the best event that it could be. And I will say to you, um, Mayor Pro Tem Wilson, that I think that next year that all the council needs to be up there with Santa Claus when the tree is lit and, and that they can count down from there. So I will put in that request to the committee. Is there a vote for that or is this? Add to the okay, committee. Okay, I second it. I so second I'm, it. I'm, putting that, I'm putting that idea into the committee that they consider that for next time. And then of course the city birthday party last night was very nice. Troop 76, um, we have, I found out we have 10 Girl Scout troops in the city of Grand Terrace. And this was just one of them that we showcased this year. So uh, the Historical and Cultural Committee has their, their work cut out for them in showcasing the other nine. But they did a wonderful job, as always. And thank you to those that were able to attend. I will close with that and move on to our agenda. Item number, item F is public hearings, of which we have none. Item G is unfinished business, which we have none. So we'll go to new business. We are moving item 15 to the first part of our, our new business. And that is the award of $2,000 each in community benefit funds to the city of, or to the Grand Terrace High School boys basketball and to the Titan wrestling team. Assistant city manager, Cynthia Fortune. Good evening. Good evening, Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem. Um, as you had mentioned tonight, we are going to review the uh, community benefit fund applications that the city has received. Um, this staff report supports the following goals. Goal number one, ensuring our fiscal viability through the continuous review of grant applications received. And goal number four, develop and implement successful partnerships through productive collaboration with community youth programs. Um, for the staff report for the December month, the city received two applications. The first one is from the Grand Terrace High School Boys Basketball. Um, they are going to hold an activity on a Martin Luther King Day, which is going to be the 18th of January. It's a beat cancer event. Uh, this is to bring awareness to students and the community about cancer prevention and treatment. Um, the purpose is to promote student participation, raise donations for the American Cancer Society to be used by local community members if needed. Um, they are requesting a $2,000 amount to use to pay for the officials for this one-day event. Um, the 
Uh, Coach Ray sends his sincere apologies for not being able to make it tonight. He and the boys are actually playing a game in Ontario tonight. And on behalf of the city council and the city, I told them I hope we win. And they're hoping that they do so and we'll come back with that news. Our second application is from the Grand Terrace High School Titan Wrestling Team. Uh, the, the activity they're requesting for is for the purchase of new uniforms, headgear and tournament fees, as well as transportation to and from meets for the wrestling team. Their purpose is to provide a safe and positive environment for our youth to grow, thrive, and be a part of something truly lasting. Uh, the uh, organization of the team is requesting a $2,000 grant uh, to use for uniforms, headgear, tournament fees, and transportation. Um, the wrestling team is here to answer any questions or if city council would like to hear more about their team, they are more than willing to come up to the microphone and speak. Um, so currently, uh, as approved in our 2019-20 budget, uh, total set aside for community grant funds is 15,000. We have spent 4,000 to date, leaving as a balance of 11,000. Should city council approve both grant awards, that will give us a balance of seven. That concludes my report. I will be happy to answer any questions city council may have. I would and like it, to hear from the wrestling team, please. Of course, <laughs> please. Hello everyone. Um, good evening, Mayor McNabo and distinguished council members. My name is Marie Odenbaugh and I'm currently the girls wrestling um, varsity captain. Um, I first off wanna start off by saying thank you for your time and this opportunity to be here today. It means a lot to us. Uh, me, and my, me and Luke, my fellow captain, have been wrestling for three years and it's been nothing but created endless memories and just an overall good experience for our high school career. And I'm extremely blessed to be part of this team because we're hardworking and we're a deserving team. Um, this amount would help our teammates perform even better and make our GT family proud. Um, this generous grant um, we hope to receive would cover, importantly, the expensive for varsity singlets and important tournament costs for the boys and girls. Hello, everybody. My name is Luke Vargas. I am the varsity's boys captain. Um, I am here to tell you about my experience. This team is like my second family. I play three sports and this is the sport that I love the most and I feel like has the best atmosphere. I've been wrestling for this team for three years and I honestly could say like, I could call these my brothers and my sisters. Um, I love this team. This grant, if, if you guys are gonna give it to us, it will be lovely and pay for everything and help us out tremendously, thank you. Good evening, Mayor McNamo, um, esteemed uh, council members. My name is John Odenbaugh. I'm the head coach of Grand Terrace Wrestling. I've been there since the school started for nine years. This is our ninth, ninth season. This is half our team here tonight. Um, glad they all can make it, being that Friday is the start of finals. Mm -hmm. And uh, that will also explain why we're going to leave right after this. They need to get home and get to study in. Okay. So we really appreciate the consideration for this grant. Um, during our wrestling season, we travel all around Southern California to compete. Two weeks ago, we were in San Fernando. Last week, we were in Paris. And this week, we'll be in Anaheim. And I always get asked, where's Grand Terrace? And I always tell them, we're on the 215, the one exit town between San Bernardino and Riverside. So while we're out there, this grant will give us the uniforms to make us look good as we're out there representing the city of Grand Terrace. And thank you, and if you have any questions, please ask. Thank you, Coach Odenbaugh, and thank you for coaches of the team. Does council have questions of the team? Council Member Allen. Well, I do have a question, but before I do ask that, I just wanna applaud you 
coach and, and your team, and, uh, and, I, and also to the basketball team, if they were here and their coach, I would do the same thing. And I just, I can tell that there's a, a high level of confidence in these youth right here. They have no uh, hesitation to step up and tell uh, their story there at the, at the podium. And, I, and so I can see that this uh, is really doing more than just putting muscles on their shoulders. You know, it's giving them confidence and that's, that's a good thing. I'd like to ask though, um, what do you have any? Do you have any plan? Have you? Uh, what have you done in the past, or do you have any plans for the future for how you're going to also uh, do any fundraising efforts, like are you doing any, like car washes or bake sales or anything like that? Okay, so in, in the past we uh, used to hold uh, the big CIF wrestling tournament at our place, and that was our major fund fundraiser. Um, three years ago, uh, we're we're not allowed by our uh, administration at the school to hold it anymore due to political reasons. So we've kind of scrapped and scraped the best we can. We hold off-season tournaments. Um, this year in particular, um, we went on a donation drive with, um, with local communities or local vendors um, or doing a, a staff t-shirt drive as we speak. So this year we really got back on our feet and having a lot of uh, help from our, our families, our, our parents and our kids out there doing the work, stepping up to to help fundraise. Um, this tonight was a result of one of my um, wrestler's parents putting in the grant for, for the team. Well, thank you for that response. And if there's any leftover t-shirts, let me know. What, what size, sir? <laughs> Council Member Hussey. Charge him. <laughs> well, thank you for coming out. Believe it or not, I wrestled in high school, and I hear it every year from my brother-in-law about my uniform I used to have. So. But I told him he used soccer, so but I had, they haven't changed the uniforms, correct? Correct. Yeah. So there's a reason why those uniforms are like that. And I remember uh, we went and shave, and we used our chin to plant it in the foreheads. I don't know if they still do that. Anybody get those burns and stuff? So but it was a good times, a uh, good one-on-one -on -one competition. You know, it's um, you always have to be like three moves ahead what this person's going to do another person. So good teamwork. Uh, I was skinny, and they still made me lose weight. I don't know why, but you, know, <laughs> you got to get in the lower weight class. They always want you in the lower weight class, but thank you. Now you're that. eligible again. <laughs> yeah, <no. laughs> so, yeah, if I wrestled again, you'll have metal flying out of my neck and everything, but I wish you guys the best season this year, and good luck. Thanks, God bless. Questions? All right, thank you so much, and I'm going to open it up for public comment if anyone would like to speak on this item. All right. I see no takers. I'll bring it back to council for consideration of a motion. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion that we approve the uh, community benefits fund grant application for the high school boys basketball for 2000 and the Grand Terrace High School Titan wrestling team for 2000. Second. Okay, I have a motion by council member Allen, a second by Mayor Pro Tem Wilson, and you need to let the basketball team know that you carried it for them, right? <laughs> Please vote. Motion passes unanimously with council members Allen, Hussey, and Robus voting yes, Mayor Pro Tem Wilson voting yes, and Mayor McNabo voting yes. Thank you all of you for being here and speaking up and doing such a wonderful job representing our city. We'll move on to item number 11 on our agenda, which is the consideration of removal of Commissioner Jeremy Briggs from the Grand Terrace Planning Commission without cause, pursuant to Grand Terrace Municipal Code Section 2.16.030. Mr. City Attorney, um, do you have a comment as to why we don't have a staff report for this? Yes, Madam Mayor. Um, under our Municipal Code Section 2.16.030, um, all members of the Planning Commission shall serve at the pleasure of the City Council and may be re removed at any time with or without cause. Uh, in this case, um, the, uh, there is a motion, at least, or a proposal to remove a commissioner. Um, there is no staff uh, report because there is no staff uh, action or research or anything that is necessary for, uh, for this action. This is simply a council uh, motion, second, and a vote, uh, and obviously uh, public comment, if any. 
All right. So public comment first. Sure. I have a question. Council Member Robles. So procedurally, you're saying as a council person, I can't ask questions? No, no, I did not say that. Okay, because it said you're, it was going to be a motion, a second, and a vote. No, no, I, and yeah. again, I, yeah, the, you're always welcome to ask questions. Okay, thank and you. There's always opportunity for discussion. Oh. Yes, sir. Okay. Do you have a question, Council Member Robles? Well, I, let, let me, on, on both of these, let me just say what, I, what my thinking is. I would like to hear um, if there's um, a reason or if, they de uh, if each proposer declines a reason, uh, I'd like to at least hear that and be able to um, substitute um, a, a way of going about this. Um, but I would, uh, I'll go ahead and just say, I, I would hope that perhaps one of the things that we could consider is some training, do a reset, do some training of all of our um, appointees. Um, obviously by this, um, two individuals know that there is some, you know, big, big concerns um, and have some kind of uh, method to, um, if after some training, um, and I understand we have, you know, either our uh, city attorney can do it or our insurance authority can do it. Um, we can have um, where they, 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 they uh, mandatory training, they sign the, the, you know, the agreement that they, they understand the key points of their training and we do, do a reset and move on. Okay, and so you had a question. Your, your so question, question, whether that is, whether that is a, something that we can do at this point? It's something that, I, yeah, that I want a question that we possibly may, may want to consider that. But why don't we go ahead and, and listen to the folks? All right, so we'll open this for public comment. There were a number of emails, and City Clerk, would you please give a, give a summary of those emails? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Excuse me. Excuse me. Please, I've asked the City Clerk to summarize the email. That's what we're gonna do. I will put us in recess at this time. Five minute recess. Clerk. Mayor, I'd like to be recognized. I would like the city clerk to summarize what Mayor, she has Mayor, I received. would like to be recognized. Councilmember Robles, I'm gonna go ahead and have the city clerk summarize what Ma she's received. Ma'am, point of order. I'm a one-fifth elected of this body. You do not have the right to supersede my voice. Can I talk to the, to the city attorney? You do not have the right if you, to want to talk to, if you want to talk to the city attorney, talk to Don't the city attorney. Don't interrupt me. You asked this to be recognized, be... and I told you what I was going okay, to do Okay, I'm just procedure. going to continue talking then. Well, we can come back to your comments once I, the city clerk I is I would done. like to make a motion, and this is just to give an opportunity to the electeds here. I would like to make a motion that we go ahead and have the city clerk read the emails. I'll second. All right, there's a motion and a second. Please vote. Motion fails. With council members Allen, Mayor Pro Tem Wilson, Mayor Magnabo voting no, Council Member Hussey, and Council Member Robles voted yes. All right, thank you. Would you please summarize the email that you received? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, you have each been provided with a copy of the 29 emails that were received from members of the public in opposition to the removal of Commissioner Jeremy Briggs from the Grand Terrace Planning Commission. Those members of the public that had sent these emails are as follows. Jessica Eubank, Nancy Mack, Joseph Carroll, Chaz Stevens, Mike Anderson, Kay Rain, Terry Wolfong, John Miller, Jeanette Valencia, Diana DeCastro, Kevin Ellis, Danella Brown, Lawrence Bonilla, 
JC Portugal, Luke Tillett, Liz Lisa Belen Sanchez, Jennifer Areza, Lori Williams, Michael James, Adam Tetley, Brian Pope, Jody Correa, Cecilia Ayala, Nicholas Gallardo, Jennifer Mankel, Zulema Hernandez, Andy Robinson, Kate Calhoun, and Rachel Plum. Thank you. Do you have a request to speak on this item? Yes, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Rita Schwark. Rita Shore, 21952 Grand Terrace Road. I hope this, uh, taking them off the Planning Commission is not a personality related, nor is it politically uh, related or anything like that. But I think the decency should be told what is the cause, what is the reason. If you don't want to talk to Jeremy or Jeff, tell me, I'll tell them, no problem. Um, and and uh, Jeremy should be allowed to stay on the Planning Commission. Everybody at one time on this council, the first time you held office or something, think how you felt. How would you like to be recalled or dismissed like you didn't know anything like that? And I don't think it's right that they should be off the Planning Commission. We have some representation on the west side. We need more representation on the west side. And uh, Jeffrey has given a lot of volunteer work. He does a lot of work on the west side. We need more representation. Um, what you think is bad, maybe that happened with their personality or whatever they did, maybe some other person would give them a chance not think it's bad at all. And um, different opinions and different views of things are good for the community. That's what we need. I hope this is not politically or personality related. I do not like that, and I think uh, Jeremy and Jeff should be allowed to stay on the Planning Commission. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Schwark. I appreciate your comments, and thank you for being here tonight. Jeremy Rivera. You know, I'm starting to think that it's a problem with men that are of large stature and beards in this city that are a little passionate and a little outspoken. Because I think if I was on the Planning Commission, I'd probably be in my friend's shoes named Jeremy. Because I'm passionate, I speak my mind, and sometimes people can't handle that in our little country pumpkin town in Grand Terrace of all 13,000 with overpaid city officials. Really? <laughs> What other city manager makes $215,000 a year? You know the city manager at Colton only makes $196? We're, on, I, the, we're on the planning commission issue. No, I'm, I'm talking in general about the planning commission issue. The planning commissioners are volunteers. Volunteers. No stipend, no car allowance, nothing. And you're removing volunteers? You can't even get a quorum half the time for the Park and Rec Committee. It's a joke. It really, truly is. And then, Mr. City Attorney, I'm sorry, I don't know if I see your son or a junior associate that show up at the Planning Commission meetings, but you're not even there either. So I don't know if it's your same law firm. I hope it's at least the same firm we're paying. But, you know, I think it's a personal. I really do, Rita. I think it's something very personal. And I do not want to see Jeremy Briggs removed. He does a lot for the city. He's a wealth of knowledge. He helps the youth. He's here for the kids. And you know what? A little difference. Oh, boy. Here we go. It's kind of a little difference, and we're going to kick him off because we can. That's all I got to say. Thank you, Mr. Rivera. I appreciate your comments. Jeffrey McConnell. Jeffrey McConnell, Grand Terrace. At the beginning of the meeting, we all stood up and pledged allegiance to that flag. 
There's a lot of things uh, behind that flag, a lot of meanings in the Constitution, and, uh, a lot of rights guaranteed. This municipal code that's being quoted has absolutely no due process. It just shouldn't be there. It should have some due process. You pledge allegiance to the flag, and yet some of us here are totally ignoring the rights that are guaranteed under the Constitution. That's called hypocrisy. We weren't even notified to come here. Terry Reagan's coming up on the um, Parks and Rec to be appointed. He was notified. We're being publicly humiliated and kicked off, and we weren't even notified to come here. So, what kind of message does this send to volunteers? This is insanity. This is a volunteer community. This is spreading around town. This is one of the reasons why I hear why people don't want to get involved, especially in politics, because of all the backstabbing. You're still looking for volunteers to close parks. That's not going to have a good effect on them. I didn't go to the city birthday party last night for the first time in 18 years. We've got 15 years in the Lions Club called Bingo for 13 years, a board of directors for their chamber three years, six years as editor of the Blue Mountain Outlook. I've been to half the town knows my face because I'm all over the place volunteering. I don't feel like volunteering anymore. That's what I feel like. I wasted my time. I've been here 20 years, 19 years I've been volunteering. I feel like I'm wasting my time. As Jeremy Rivera says, that's yeah, because we're a little bit more passionate than others. When I see injustice, I call it out. I stand up to it, whatever it may be. So we have a general plan update coming up. I've been going to the Planning Commission for 18 years, and, and we need and I sat through the last 2016 general plan update. So the experience that is needed on the planning commission, whether it's my experience as a general contractor real estate or Jeremy's experience in the trucking world. So I would, we would both be a valuable asset to this long, it's very long, <laughs> boring and arduous procedure. And after what Council Robles members said about all the housing changes and everything that's coming and with the digital age and everything that's coming down on us, you need experience on that planning commission. And for political reasons, that's what it is, Rita. You're getting, you're getting rid of experience and the city's gonna suffer for it. Thank you, Mr. McConnell. My last request to speak is from Jeremy Briggs. Jeremy Briggs, Grand Terrace. I come here tonight to talk in front of you about a surprise, what I take as a blindside attack to my personal character. Um, I don't see why there's an account for this, why this should have been brought to an agenda, why I was never brought into the council. When I first got in on planning commission, I came to you, Mayor, and asked for a sit down meeting with you to get thought eye to eye with you. I knew from that meeting you didn't have nothing to do with me and wanted nothing to do with me in that meeting. I knew you tried to steer me in a different direction put my efforts somewhere else. I knew what that meant from day one. And now this comes up out of nowhere because I have been more vocal during the planning commission meetings. I have been having to say stuff that doesn't make sense to me. I'm not gonna sit back and be a guy that lays down and be quiet and just go along with the, per the agenda that's behind doors. We know where that agenda is behind doors. It's the secret that lives over here that we don't talk about. But because I'm not part of that plan, let's get rid of me. That's exactly what it looks like. If there's no due process, no staff report, no reasoning why this is, and we're just gonna make a vote on it, but we can't tell me why. I put my heart and effort into this city for the last six years. I have kids right here. I do everything for The reason I'm standing up here tonight is for those three girls and everyone I've coached, everyone I've done everything for in this city. I don't do it for me. You think I do it for me? I don't, I could go every day at work, come home, be with my family, and that's it. No, I don't care about me. I care about the girls. I care about every kid I've ever coached in this city that I will continue to coach in this city. I will always put my heart and my effort into everything I do. And to be blindsided, that I'm just gonna remove you without talking to you, tell you what you're doing wrong. As a manager, I've always brought employees that have been failing and done nothing but to turn them around. I ask for the same thing, but obviously I don't get that respect. So this shows me that this is nothing but a personal attack against me and my colleague over here. 
doesn't show anything else. If there's no staff report, no due diligence, why are we here tonight? Why are we even talking about this? I don't understand this at all. This seems like a backstab move coming up to an election year. And that's what it comes to me. Removing me, removing Jeffrey off the commission takes a whole new eyes. We want five same thoughts on the planning commission. We don't want five same thoughts sitting up there. It doesn't do anything for us if there's no controversy, no diversity on the board. We want to take that away, right? We want five people to vote the exact way you want to vote. And that's what it looks like. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Briggs. It's my last request to speak, so I'll bring it back to council. I make a motion to remove Commissioner Jeremy Briggs from the Grand Terrace Planning Commission without cause, pursuant to Grand Terrace Municipal Code Section 216.030. Second. Okay, motion by Council Member Allen, please vote. Motion fails with Council Members Allen and Mayor McNobo voting yes. Council Member Hussey, Council Member Roll the vote no. Mayor Pro Tem Wilson abstains. All right. Thank you. We'll move on to item 12, which is remover, removal of Commissioner Jer Jeffrey McConnell from the Planning Commission without cause, as requested by Council Member Jeff Allen, pursuant to Grand Terrace Municipal Code, Section 2.16.030. Do you have a question at this time? I have discussion. Is a, a discussion allowed, City Attorney? It's a question at this time, and then we'll go to public comment. Yes, and the okay. dis discussion will be allowed after com comment. All right. So we have email for this item as well. Would you please summarize the email that you received, Madam City Clerk? No. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Copies of these emails have been placed at the dais in front of each of you. The city has received six emails from members of the public in opposition to the removal of Commissioner Jeffrey McConnell from the Grand Terrace Planning Commission as follows. Ruth Ann Christensen, Ann Wade Hornsby, Jennifer Areza, Lynn Roberts, Jennifer Minkle, and Kate Calhoun. And you have request to speak? First request is by Rita Schwark. Rita Schwark, 21952 Grand Terrace Road. I've known Jeffrey McConnell for many years. And again, I'm gonna repeat what I said before. You know, I hope this is not personal or personality related or politics. And again, I'm going to repeat, think about the first time you held office. If someone were to say, leave, I'm going to kick you out, how would you have felt? How would you have felt if you're not giving a cause? Just think about that, please. Jeffrey has given his volunteer time. He has helped me personally. He has helped many of the neighbors. He's a very good neighbor, and he does want to represent. We have good representation now with Ed on the west side. We need more, especially what's going to be proposed on the February uh, 13, 2020 for the truck. The, 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 we need more representation on the west side. So please, Jeffrey McConnell needs to stay on the planning commission. He knows what he's talking about. He's very experienced. He might have different opinions, different views, but Come on, guys, grow up. This is the life. If you have different uh, opinions or different views, we're all adults here. Work it out, but don't, do not kick him off the Planning Commission. Keep him on the Planning Commission. The West Side needs him. We need him in this community. He knows what he's talking about. He's very knowledgeable of things going on in the city. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Schwark. I appreciate your comments. Our next request to speak is by Jeremy Rivera. Okay, so this one isn't for the big bearded guy like me with the same name almost. But 
you know, I know Jeffrey can be rough, and it might be a good tie between him and I sometimes how rough around the edges we may be. But I know he's passionate, and I know he's good for our city. I don't think that there is any malicious intent that Jeffrey McConnell has ever brought forth towards this city. I think he's only trying to better it. It's important there are people on the planning commission that understand building and codes. We had two recent spec tracks put in, one on Briar Green Lane, I believe. If you walk that track, there's not enough room in the driveways for cars to park in the driveway so you can walk on the sidewalk. That's not neighborhood friendly. Go drive by it. Take five minutes of your day and check it out. Then on my street, Van Buren, we had another track put in of 17 houses, I think on a little less than an acre and a half, I don't know. Same thing, driveways are not long enough to walk on the sidewalk if the resident parks their car in the driveway. On top of that, they put two-story houses that butt up right against Van Buren instead of a single-story house. If you would have had somebody with some knowledge, perhaps, like Jeffrey, he probably would have caught those things. So now I'm not gonna walk in that new track of spec houses because I can't walk on the sidewalk. I have to walk in the street with my five-year-old. It's important to have experience. I know sometimes roughness can come with a little liability, but we all do things that cause a little bit of liability. I know there's some personality conflicts. Mr. Duffy on the personal level where we can laugh and have fun. But I also know Mr. Duffy and Jeffrey have some pretty strong issues that have ended up in San Mario County Court this year. So that worries me. But he needs to stay on the Planning Commission. And you got, guess what? You guys appointed him last year with Jeffrey Allen. You guys all voted, I believe, five zip. And now, now one person wants to yank him off. And with Jeremy Briggs, you guys also all voted for him. There were six applicants, I believe, when Jimmy, Jeremy Briggs went, but you chose him. So, and with Jeffrey Allen and Jeffrey McConnell, there were only those two, and you picked those two, and that was it. So, just it, be cautious who's on the planning commission, because we, we need people with experience like Jeffrey McConnell, and I, I think that's why he should stay on. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rivera. Jeremy Briggs. Jeremy Briggs, Grand Terrace. Just want to speak on my behalf for Commissioner Jeffrey McConnell on this. He is a wealth of knowledge. He, I can look at him as a mentor since I've been appointed on to the Planning Commission. He's always stirred me the right way, make sure if I have a simple question, he's been there to answer me. To take a guy like this off because of personal reasons, which we all know it's definitely personal reasons why we're trying to get rid of Jeffrey McConnell off the Planning Commission. To take someone off without his years of contracting experience, the community that loves him. I mean, to take, I don't, I just, I'm still flabbergasted that well, I'm even up here talking about this right now. We're removing volunteers. At the end of the day, we're trying to remove people that actually care about the community, not their own agenda. And this is what it is. It's a personal attack over two men that care, they're passionate, they speak their mind. They don't do it for themselves. They're doing it for the people around them, the people they love. If it was, I could say the same thing. Jeffrey McConnell is not a person to remove out the Planning Commission. He's looking out for the youth. I see him all the time at all the events. The first one, Farmer Jeff. All the kids see him as Farmer Jeff. You want to you want bad mouth Farmer Jeff to the youth? Because that's what it looks like tonight. And for somebody that put his name on there, that's probably done more than we all know for you. And you want to remove him. You, you were the first one to put my name on there, on the Planning Commission. And this is the move you make for someone like this, it's unbelievable. It really is unbelievable that this is where we stand as a city, as a community so divided, and this is where it puts us right down the middle. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Briggs. The next speaker is Don Smith. My name is Don Smith and I live at 12029 Mount Vernon Avenue. Uh, where I've resided for the last 18 years or 28 years or whatever it's been. And so I know Jeff well. 
And I uh, will speak mostly for Jeff, although I didn't realize that Jeremy Briggs was facing the same kangaroo court. That sounds like uh, Mitch McConnell's in charge. Um, and anyway, it says here, without cause, how can the city of Grand Terrace, even in a pissing contest, how can they, without cause, remove somebody? Is that constitutional? Is that legal? Is that legitimate? Without cause? I, I, I really wonder just that, that very, very simple part. But Jeff, I was going to speak for him, and only because I don't know Jeremy Briggs that well, but I was going to speak for Jeff and his civic mindedness. He one time mentioned to me that uh, he'd been involved in the Boy Scouts. And uh, last night's uh, birthday party, uh, Jeff was the, the uh, host for that. Uh, he's gone to 18 of them or something like that. I've gone to maybe six or eight. But anyway, Jeff was the host one time when, I, you know, that was sort of a civic-minded thing for him to do. He's on the Planning Commission, which is a, uh, you know, non-paying job where somebody from the, representing the, the city of Grand Terra said, Jeff, would you help us out? You know, we, we need somebody that's not a moron. We need somebody that's got a little experience. We've got somebody with a little bit of knowledge for the Planning Commission. So, uh, you know... Would you help us out? It's the same thing as the uh, Grand Terrace Lions Club, where Jeff has, has never said no, and he has volunteered, and he does some of the really the crappiest jobs. I know that because I remember it myself. I know what, you know, there are some pretty, pretty ugly jobs. Jeff's done them all with a smile. Uh, he's Farmer Jeff. He gave my grandson a watermelon which I had to carry, and it weighed more than I did. But uh, my grandson always refers to Jeff as that farmer. And his brother, my grandson's brother, says, you know a farmer? I know a farmer. And you can't cast him out. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Smith. I appreciate your comments. Mr. Darrell Moore. The news these days is full of the Trump impeachment. There's a lot of talk about what constitutes a high crime and misdemeanor. Our founding fathers knew that it had to be very difficult to remove the president, so they required proof of a crime for such removal. Because if impeachment were too easy, it would be corrosive for the republic. There would be petty squabbling, factionalism, vendettas, basically a popularity contest. So this proposed vote to remove Jeff, unlike the president's impeachment, there's no requirement in Grand Terrace for proving any crimes or misbehavior. So me, the public in general, has no idea why this is happening. However, just like the national level, it would be very bad for our little city to get involved in popularity contests, petty squabbles, factions, and vendettas. If, Jed, if Jeff did something wrong or deeply offensive and this vote came in five to zero to remove, it would look justified. But if it passes narrowly three to two, it's going to smell like a, like a vendetta. And that, and, that would be, and that would be very bad. Anybody who serves in these city posts makes a big investment in time and energy with no expectation to get rich and deserves recognition and thanks. Jeff has been in the city a long time. He, he faithfully attends all the meetings, keeps himself informed. He's a very knowledgeable person in building and development. We have many issues coming, including the general plan update that he talked about, and his knowledge would be very valuable. He worked on the last one. It's the kind of thing that most people don't really want to work on. It'd be like asking to read the New York City phone book. It's, it's very boring, but it's work that needs to be done. So I would ask each person to consider carefully before voting and urge you not to vote to remove Jeff. 
Thank you, Mr. Moore. Thank you. Jennifer Catulls. Good evening. Jennifer Catulls, 21815 Vivienda Avenue. Um, I came in tonight to speak on the character of Jeff McConnell as a neighbor and community member. He's always there to provide help around my home and our neighbor's home. He gives us awareness of what's going to happen at these meetings and lets us know what's going on in the community. At different events around town, I've seen him there working. On a personal matter for family, it was mentioned the Van Buren new um, homes on Van Buren Boulevard, or Van Buren. Um, as a family member whose family owns the property alongside that, I would like the Planning Commission people to be aware that when you have developers that come in, that they take into consideration the family members and homes that have been there for years. That property has been in our family for probably 40 years or more, and the damage that is done by, that, by building that property along that wall is devastating to the family members of my family. So thank you. Sorry, thanks. Thank you for your comments, Ms. Cattells. Jen Janice Makshinoff. Janice Makshinoff, 21816 Vivienda, Grand Terrace. Um, I am personally shocked that you are allowed to publicly humiliate someone for a volunteer job. If you're gonna humiliate someone like that, you should at least have the nerve to say why. Thank you, Ms. Makshinoff. And that's my last request to speak, so Madam I'll close Mayor. public comment. I had one delivered. Thank you. Jeffrey McConnell. You don't need an address. I think you should give us an address. Everyone else gave us an address. Is that required Just, by point law? Of, point of order. Attorney? All the training that I've had that we should not be asking addresses. We can always request, but there is no requirement that okay. the speaker provide it. All right, Jeffrey McConnell, if you would, I would like to know your address. I live in Grand Terrace. Question. Okay, so, so what's live, this all about? You live in Grand Terrace, is that She's what you said? eating up my time, Deborah. No, I'm, I'm trying to find out what your address is. You, you didn't tell me. I turned it into the Dog City Clerk. All right, thank you. Thank you. So what is this really all about? So let me tell you a little story. About six months ago, I was down on, the, on my property, five acres, working out in the field, probably doing weed abatement for anybody listening, and... Um, I see flying down the dirt road uh, Mr. Jeff Allen's car and close pursuit another vehicle right behind him. Jeff flies into my driveway, it's 240 feet long, stops near the top, I meet him up there. The other car stops down outside my gate. Three surly Hispanics get out and they're standing down on my gate and they want Mr. Allen. He gets out, nervous as a leaf, shaking. He says, Jeff, you gotta help me. These guys wanna kick my ass. I said, well, what happened? He says, well, I was videotaping him dumping down by the trestles, which we all know happens a lot. So I said, yeah, yeah okay, yeah, I'll go down there. I went down there. He's my friend. I knew him very well. I knew it was his car because he's been down on my farm picking free food for at least three times out of my garden, which I have no problem with. I do that for anybody who wants it. So I walked down there all by myself. I'm walking down 200 feet. And these three guys are standing down there with their arms folded, lined up like at the OK Corral. And I suddenly realized, what am I getting myself into, man? These guys could be packing heat. So I go down there. I start speaking Spanish, break the ice. One of them speaks English. We basically straightened it all out. They just didn't want him to turn in the video to the authorities, because they weren't allegedly not dumping. They were looking at somebody else's dump. So I came, no problem. I looked behind me. Jeff Allen was way back there. I'm out there by myself. And this is what the thanks I get for saving your butt. I could have been shot. So what's this really all about? He won't tell you. There's a lot of rumors going around. I ran against him in the last election. He's up for re-election again next year. I think he just wants to humiliate us or anybody who won't run against him. So whether it's totally misleading the general city, 
the, the Council of Planning Commission with the facts on my, any CUP or mine when I speak out or when I'm hit with a frivolous lawsuit by another staff member trying to take away my First Amendment rights, which is guaranteed by all, to all of us by the Constitution, this is a problem. So the Constitution, about 240 years ago, there was another uh, group of guys that were very passionate, very passionate, and they took on a tyrannical British government. They fought the good fight, and, and some of them, yeah, they, some of them got shot. But the patriots preserved, and they were victorious in the end. So they created this great document called the Constitution of the United States. And it's full of checks and balances, which guarantees patriots like Jeremy and myself to call out injustices within the government to prevent such a uh, tyranny or a dictatorship. As it says in the Constitution, it's not only our right to throw off an oppressive government, but it is our duty. So I'm being public humiliated for what I feel when I pledge allegiance to that flag for doing my duty. Thank you, Mr. McConnell. Bring it back to council for consideration of a motion. Councilmember Allen. Sure, get a are we, are we, uh, yeah, I just wanted to uh, clarify something now. When I was on the planning commission for five years, we were, we, we were paid a stipend. Has that stopped? Because everybody here is talking about them being, the, that they're not being paid. We Mr. were paid. Mr. City Manager. They do receive a stipend. I thought so, thank you. All right, so is there a consideration of a motion at this time? We had a motion. And a Council member, did you make a motion? Yes, and well. Well, before public comment, you did. So shall we read it again? Yes. I, I read the agenda item. Are you making that motion? All right, I'll second that motion. Council member Robles, you had the comment you wanted to make? Okay. First of all, I'm going to say I don't appreciate every time there's something you're very passionate about. <laughs> you frankly abuse your gavel and you ramrod things and you shove your weight around. I don't appreciate it. One of the problems I have with, with this entire process is I think it's against the spirit of the Brown Act. The Brown Act is that everything that we do has to be transparent has to be noticed and in public, and, and really there ought to be reasons, reasons why. Now, when it comes to staff, you know, they have their rights, and so we don't disparage, you know, our staff in public. We have to go into closed session, but we still are obligated to come out and report any action that we take. I, I think there's a problem when we don't, um, say why we're doing something and, and explain to your peers why we're doing something. I'm very strong on due process. I think as an elected official, that's something that we really got to protect. Um, there is case law going on in, at the federal level about the administrative state where, you know, to make things simple, they just say, oh, let the administrators take it. They delegate this authority and it's just, they're making laws without the public knowing what's going on. Now. I don't know Jeremy Briggs, and I, I didn't vote for Jeremy Briggs, but I did go to him and say, you know, I'm sorry I didn't amend the motion to make it unanimous. It would just, you know, had, had escaped me. But for him, there was very great enthusiasm from this body. Um, for Jeff McConnell, no, there wasn't. But the council at that time, if they had reservations, they should have said so. But instead, what I heard from my peers privately was, well, he's the only one that applied, you know, so I'm not gonna go against it. Now we're talking, now I don't know your reasons. I just know that someone said, you should watch the last planning commission meeting, which I did, and they said Briggs was rude. I didn't, I'm sorry, I didn't see it. I didn't see it. Um, Jeff McConnell's behavior was he was acting as a citizen, he was protecting his property rights. And if a gentleman cannot protect his property rights, I don't understand why I would have any concerns with that. On a character level, because I don't know, I only know Jeff, there was a campaign and the former mayor, Walt Stankovitz, was depicted as a Nazi and I was depicted as a puppet on a string as was former uh, mayor Sandoval. 
And there was some language in there that I had heard come out of Jeff McConnell's words that he didn't know me, he didn't know that I had uh, ever done anything for this community. So after the election, you know, because I'm elected to um, represent all of you, and I asked him, I says, did you have anything to do with that flyer? And he said, no. I asked Councilman Wilson at that time also, and he said no. They were kind enough and straight enough with me to say that they had maybe perhaps in the early stages been involved, but it went way beyond what their um, ethics and personal morals allowed. And you know what? I let it go. I took their word and I let it go. Um, and to me, that's you know a character to be honest with someone. The other thing that I'm very confused about, if this is because I don't know about rudeness or uh, inappropriateness, you know, we had um, former Councilman Ken Henderson very angry because you, Mr. Allen, as a planning commissioner, came and spoke about a Lewis development project, and you act as a planning commissioner as a quasi-judicial role. And when you come and you speak in the activist role, as Terrace the Senate almost did, and that's after five years of doing it, I wonder, well, what's happening here? You know, so th that is a very, you know, egregious problem for the city. If you have planning commissioners running around being advocates instead of being quasi-judges. The, the final thing, too, is if, if, if this is because of inappropriate behavior. So Jeremy like, Rivera likes to speak out from the audience. We knew that before, Mayor, you voted to play him your appointee to the Park Commission. There were others that had problems with it, and I said, I'm going to trust your judgment on this. So one of the things is that you, you, you did not want to have to correct him in public, so you propose taking a, uh, the city attorney to go talk to him, which we pay hourly wages for. So um, I'm, I just really feel that we need to have a reset. We really need to have the, the fact that, no, we don't do things without cause. It's not, not in the spirit of the Constitution. It's not the spirit of due process. It's not in the spirit of a good community. Um, you know, uh, we had Congress people that were pushed out of being representative of the people, Congress, without any due process, without people saying, well, this person allegedly did this. Do you have proof? Other than hearsay or this is what I think, whatever. We, I really believe we need to train these folks. We need to have a process. Um, we need to have some kind of progressive thing. You, you, you do a training, you sign certain code of behavior, you violate that, then you're out. And we're not in this position. And that's all I have. Thank you, Councilmember Robles. Any further comments at this time? Councilmember Hussey. I, I agree with uh, Councilmember Robles. You know, the thing is, without cause, I, it leaves a bad taste in my mouth. I uh, I know it's written in there without cause. I don't I don't know why it's written in there. I think that's something that's got to be changed. I think that if somebody is doing something wrong, it should be through a process. You know, hey, this is your counseling. This is what's going to happen this time. Um, don't do it. But when we raise our hand and we take these positions, you know, we get a little passion and stuff. But we also have to be a uh, use our integrity, our good judgment, and sometimes it gets the best of us. But um, I don't like without the cause. People got to know what's wrong, and then we got to work with them and, and hone those skills. What could be gone? Because you know, a lot of people, you know, they might not know that they're doing something wrong. Uh, so that's that's my basic. You know, it leaves a bad taste in my mouth. Now, the one thing I don't like is if somebody's using their position, if they ever use their position to manipulate or yell at staff or cuss staff out or cuss people out. That is not what we're here for. I mean, I would want to be held accountable if I'm getting cussed, if I'm cussing somebody out, one of the staff members. I would hope that my council gets on me for that. You know, staff members are not here to be our servants. They're here to work for the betterment of the city, the residents, 
We're here to be the voice of the residents, and we're not here to belittle them, talk down to them, or treat them like you know what. So I don't know without the cause. I don't have any clear conscience of voting with the – I want to hear a cause, and that's just – I think that's something we need to look into with changing in the future. If we do have somebody given a hard time on a council or even on the, the planning commission – and it's not working, it's leaving a hostile environment and stuff, then we need to know the cause and we need to be brought to attention so we don't have a hostile chamber. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Hussey. Any further comments? Madam Mayor, if I may. Mr. City Attorney. Yes. Um, for the council and for the public, I, I, I do want to go over the procedure a little bit. Um, first of all, this is a, a standard uh, provision in most municipal codes when it comes to appointed positions. Um, the courts have have looked at this, and, and appointed uh, officials do not have uh, a a right to a hearing or notice. You know, typical due process because it is an appointed position. Um, the the example I always provide is uh, if a council member were to pass away um, and a new council member were to come on board, um, either via appointment or a special election, that council member will want to maybe appoint their own people. And, and that's what the statute and that's what our ordinance uh, provides. This is not a new ordinance. Um, this has been in place, I believe, since the city's incorporation. And I will tell you in all the cities I've worked with and most cities across the state have this type of procedure. Um, you know, Council Member Robles, you raise a good point about the Brown Act. Um, I, I will say that we are in compliance with the Brown Act. Um, we specify on the agenda the proposed action to be taken, and we do specify it is without cause. Um, and without cause means there's no reason need to be provided. Um, there may not be a reason. As I was saying earlier uh, with the example, I mean, it may be change for the sake of change. Um, so, you know, I do, you know, I hear the council, um, but, but the procedure is appropriate and, and proper under state law. So I just want to point that out. Council Member Robles. Just a quick question about procedure because um, we had, how did this get on the agenda? So we all have a right at any time to say, I want to put something on the agenda to remove a person. That is correct. Okay. And, and because, because I really thought that what we were <laughs> going to have is how we say we want to put something on a future agenda and two people have to at least go with it before it even goes on the agenda. So. Well, we have the future agenda item process uh, where we, a council member puts it on and we have a brief discussion to actually bring it back for uh, okay. further discussion. Uh, in, in that case, um, staff time is, is the issue, is that okay. we're going to you know, have okay. a, an hour or more of staff time. In this case, as I was saying at the very beginning, this is not a staff issue. There's no staff report or staff research that's required or uh, drafting of anything. This is simply a question that's being presented to the right. council for consideration. And, and, and just my last comment. I understand what you're saying, and I'm just saying that as a council person, I would like to at least have a brief, um, this, a brief synopsis from the, the person presenting the item. It's just my comfort zone. Further comments? All right, we have a motion and a second. Please vote. Motion fails with council members Allen and McNabo voting yes. Council members Hussey and Robles voting no. Mayor Pro Tem Wilson abstains. Thank you. We'll move on to item 13, which is Park and Recreation Advisory Committee appointment. We're considering in this one Mr. Terry Reagan, although Mr. Terry Reagan, do you still want to be considered? All right, may we have a staff report, please? Good evening, Madam Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem, members of council. Tonight, the discussion in the staff report is appointing a Parks and Recreation Advisory, Advisory Committee individual, Terry Reagan. The staff report supports all adopted goals and all adopted core values of the City Council's 2030 vision. On July 25th, 2017, the City Council established the Parks and Recreation Advisory Committee, which meets every second Thursday of each month at City Hall. On August 22nd, the council adopted the bylaws, which requires each council member appoint a person to the committee 
Council approve the appointments by minute order and appointments shall continue in effect until a, excuse me, until a successor is appointed. On October 7th, committee member Karen Suarez had submitted her resignation due to a move from the area. On October 22nd, the city council directed the city clerk to notice the vacancy. And on December 3rd, council member Robles completed her review of the two applications that were received. With that, staff recommends that the council approved by minute order Terry Reagan to serve as council member Sylvia Robles appointee on the Parks and Recreation Advisory Committee. That's the end of my staff report. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. Thank you. Any questions of staff at this time? Okay. Thank you very much. We'll open it up for public comment. Is there anybody on, who would like to speak on this item? No, Madam Mayor. All right. Mr. Applicant, would you like to speak? All right, <laughs> so Mr. Reagan said there's no need for him to speak at this time, so we'll bring it back to council for consideration of a motion. And uh, council member Robles. Yes, I move um, the appointment of, of Terry Reagan to the Parks and Rec Commission. Second. Okay. Motion by council member Robles, second by council member Hussey, please vote. And, th and thank you for accepting. I appointed you because I know you're you're committed and, and you won't let down this commission or, or the or the community. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, Mayor motion passes with council members Allen, Hussey, and Robles voting yes, Mayor Pro Tem voting yes, and you voting yes. Thank you. And our next item is Park and Recreation Advisory Committee appointment for Mr. Brian Phelps. Mr. Phelps, do you still want to be considered for appointment? All right, please, may we have a staff report? Good evening, Madam Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem, members of council. Before you this evening is an appointment of Brian, actually a reappointment of Brian Phelps as council member Jeff Allen's appointee. Again, on July 20, 25th, the Grand Terrace, I'm sorry, of 2017, the city council reestablished the Parks and Rec Advisory Committee. The bylaws state each council member appoint a person to the committee. Council approve the appointments by minute order. Appointments shall continue in effect until a successor is appointed. Council member Jeff Allen was elected on November 6, 2018. However, at that time, or to the, as a matter of fact, as of this date, he has not appointed, made his appointment to the Parks and Recreation Committee. With that, he has decided to continue to select, uh, keep Brian Phelps on board. And so with that, Staff recommends that we approve by one order Brian Phelps to serve as council member Jeff Allen's appointee and retain his position on the Parks and Recreation Advisory Committee. With that, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Thank you, Madam City Clerk. Any questions of staff at this time? All right, we'll open it up for public comment. Any requests to speak on this item? No, Madam Mayor. All right, Mr. Phelps, any, anything you'd like to say at this time? Yes, Madam Mayor. Uh, Brian Phelps, 11833 Kingston Street. Uh, I'd like to thank you for your trust and your reconsideration as a reappointment to the position. And uh, I, I'd like to welcome Terry to the Recreation Committee. And uh, I'd like to invite um, the public to come to some of our meetings and give their input, because their input is important to us so that we can know what the public wants in our parks and our recreation activities. So thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Phelps. We'll close comment at this time and bring it back to council for consideration of a motion. Council Member Allen. So um, thank you, Mayor. I'd like to uh, recommend that we approve by minute order Brian Phelps to serve as uh, my appointee and retain his position on the Parks and Recreation Advisory Committee. I'll second. Motion by Councilmember Allen, second by Councilmember Hussey. Please vote. Mayor, motion passes uh, unanimously with Councilmembers Allen, Hussey, and Robles voting yes, Mayor Pro Tem voting yes, and the Mayor voting yes. Thank you. All right, we have uh, no requests for future agenda items, so we'll move to City Manager Communications. Mr. Duffy. Thank you, Mayor. For the record, D. Harold Duffy, City Manager. I have just a few items for tonight.
So the first item is council talked about earlier is regarding the bus shelter, the smart bus shelter, uh, ribbon cutting ceremony. So, Mayor and Council, I would just like to note that um, in the video, there was a uh, MB1 program. You saw the, the hand drawing that occurred. And so that really, the ribbon cutting, uh, this event is really the first of many to come as we face uh, 2020. And the smart bus shelter, as, as council uh, person Robles mentioned earlier, she talked about that about a year and a half ago. And that landed in our, our uh, 2019-20 uh, council priority projects. And so it really is a first start of what the community will see as a transformation of Barton, of Barton Road, especially in April when the, um, the interchange project starts to, starts to open. Um, and so my next video, we've been really busy. <laughs>
So mayor and council, we had over 1,200 people in attendance for the event, <clears throat> 30 booths, $10,000 in donation, uh, over 200 performers and over 200 skaters and a partridge and a pear tree. And the next item is once again, we wanna make sure that uh, residents know that they can volunteer to help us close our parks. Uh, we've received tremendous response for these particular events. Um, what's happening though is that we have we do have some dedicated people that are uh, volunteers seven days a week and we're trying to really get them to not make this a full-time job and so the more volunteers we have you can share in, in this duty so we certainly have immediate openings for the fitness park dog park richard rollins park and veterans freedom park and with that that concludes my report mayor thank you mr duffy next item is a recess to close session Conference with legal counsel anticipated litigation, significant exposure to litigation pursuant to government code section 54956.9D2, one potential case. For those of you that are not here when we return, I will let you know that our next regular city council meeting will be held Tuesday, January 14th, 2020 at 6 p.m. Any request to have an item placed on a future agenda must be made in writing and submitted to the city clerk's office and the request will be processed in accordance with council procedures. And also a reminder to, to keep in your thoughts and prayers, uh, Sharon Abbott and Coach Harold Strauss, who we will be adjourning in their memory. At this time, we are in recess. All right, we'll reconvene to open session. Council met in closed session, conference with legal counsel, anticipated litigation, significant exposure to litigation pursuant to government code section 54956.9D2, one potential case. There are no reportable actions taken. We did give direction to staff. And so tonight we will adjourn to our next regular city council meeting, which will be held on Tuesday, January 14th, 2020 at 6 p.m. Any request to have an item placed on future agenda must be made in writing and submitted to city clerk's office. The request will be processed in accordance with council procedures. Tonight we close in memory of Sharon Abbott and Coach Harold Strauss. Thank you all for your attention. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, Happy Hanukkah. Good night. <laughs>